Good morning, everybody. We're live from the Bird House. It is Tuesday, August 9th, and today we're giving an update on the different bugs and birds people are seeing in their yard, and we'll share a bunch of your photos. We've had lots of photos come in, so many, um, so that we uh, kind of ran out of space for our broadcast. So we'll share even more of these photos on Saturday, which is a lot of fun. As always, if you're on, you can just say hi in the comments. If you have any sightings, we love to know what those are. You can throw those in there. What kind of birds you've been seeing, what kind of insects you've been seeing. If you have questions, you can throw those in there. Um, a couple things going on here at the birdhouse. First of all, our photo contest starts next Monday. So it is starting a little bit earlier than usual. Usually we start at early September, but we're starting it mid-August, and that'll go from Monday, August 15th through September 18th. So if you've never submitted photos for that before, it's a lot of fun. And you they are physical photos, so they're 8 by 10 photos. You can send in two photos total, and we have different categories. We have our bird category, we have wildlife, we have scenery, we even have a pet category, and we have a youth category too. So um, no matter what kind of things you like to photograph, there should be some kind of theme that you can submit your photos in for. And for more information on that, you can visit our website, um, thebirdhouseny.com, and click on the events tab at the top to see more about that. Um, and then also on Saturday, we have Wild Wings coming to the store with Birds of Prey, and they'll be here from 10 until noon. So you can stop in and see those wonderful Birds of Prey from Wild Wings. So that's always exciting to see. So both of those things are coming up over the next few days. And let's get started. As far as sightings I have had, I've been having some pretty good luck with attracting bluebirds um, out where I go camping. Got a nice wide open area, nice wide open field. And there's been um, a couple bluebirds nesting, sitting on top of nest boxes, bringing insects into the nest box. So that's been a lot of fun. In the fields, there's lots of bobolinks out there, hundreds and hundreds of bobolinks, which has been really, really cool to see. They need that wide open area, that big open grassland in order to survive. And um, that's where they'll, they'll nest is right in the grasses. So um, that's been really cool to see too. I've uh, been seeing some field sparrow. They've been out and singing. And then in the woods, I've been hearing some different birds as well. Red-eyed vireo have been singing and singing like crazy. And if you've spent any time in the woods or by the woods, you've probably heard the red-eyed vireo. And um, I can play you their call here. I've got my little identifier here. Um, you can use this or, of course, the Merlin app, which I'm always talking about. But here is the song of the red-eyed vireo. So pretty prolific as far as their, their songs go, and they'll sing all summer long. So if you're in the woods and you hear something that kind of sounds like a robin, just not as sing-songy, it's most likely going to be the red-eyed vireo. And then common yellowthroat, I've been seeing and hearing lots of common yellowthroat as well. And this is what the common yellowthroat sounds like, and they're going to be singing all summer long as well. So they've got a song that kind of sounds like Wichitty, Wichitty, Wichitty. I'll play it again for you. So they are pretty common to hear outside as well, uh, especially in the around that edge habitat. If you're kind of out in an open area and there's some woods nearby, uh, keep your eyes out and your ears out for common yellow throat because they're definitely around. And been seeing red tail hawk. Of course, there's red tail hawk around quite often and you can find them just about in any kind of habitat. They're very, very prolific. You can even see them when you're driving down the highway. Um, if you see a bird sitting on a light post or a telephone pole, that is probably going to be a red-tailed hawk and this looks like a juvenile. It doesn't have that bright red tail on it at the moment. Um, also, I heard a barred owl, which was pretty exciting. And so <clears throat> throughout the summer months, you might hear owls calling here and there. And um, the barred owl was, was calling pretty well the other evening, which was really, really fun. And I can play you what their call sounds like here. 
So their call is supposed to sound like, and they then they do that. So their call is supposed to sound like, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? And then they'll sometimes have these other sounds. They have like a really nasally kind of call, whereas the great horned owl and the screech owl, which I'll play for you in a moment, um, they have more of a clear call. But the barred owl, it's kind of muff. It sounds almost a little muffled. It sounds like a little bit nasally almost. So here's the barred owl call again that sounds like who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? So sometimes you can hear them calling back and forth, even in the summer months, which is really fun as well. So you might hear barred owl if you spend any time by the woods. You might hear great horned owl, and they're common in even more of a widespread habitat. Um, not even in parks or in your backyard, you might just hear great horned owl. And this is what they sound like. They sound Their call is supposed to sound like, you awake me too. <laughs> So that's the great horned owl. And then another owl that you might hear in the summer months is going to be the screech owl. And they have a sound that a call that sounds almost like a horse's whinny. So here's a screech owl. So really, really fun, different things that you might hear all summer long. You can hear some of these different birds calling. Even though they're not in breeding season, they will still do some different calls. Um, some of your photos, some things you guys have been seeing. Uh, this photo was sent in by Karen. If you guys have been doing any kind of gardening or out looking at your neighbor's yards and gardens, you might see lots of sunflowers in bloom. And they are definitely in bloom at the moment. And Karen has been getting a goldfinch on her sunflowers. She says, the goldfinch found my pot of mini sunflowers on the deck. So um, goldfinches will, um, they're very late nesters. So they let, uh, they nest late in the summer and um, they will start coming to uh, plants that you might have in your backyard that have gone to down like milkweed, or if you have any kind of thistle growing, um, they will pull out the down from those plants to build their nests. So they've been doing that for quite a while now. So you might not see much of that activity anymore as their nests have most likely all been built, but you might start to see them coming to flowers like these sunflowers, or if you have purple coneflower, black-eyed Susan, when these flowers start to go to seed, you'll probably see lots of goldfinches on them. They'll peck the seeds out of those flowers. So um, not only do the birds use the the, the plant down on these, but they'll also eat the seeds that come out of these flowers. So be on the lookout for that as we get later in the season. And then here's a fun by Chris. And she says a few pictures of a mother killdeer. And the second one, the babies are both sitting underneath her. So here is a killdeer in the forefront is the mother. And then in the back, you can see the young. So that's a fun photo here. And here is the photo that she sent in of both babies sitting underneath her. So this looks like a wide open kind of area as well, which the killdeer do like. They don't like um, an area with a lot of tall grasses or tall plants. They like a nice open space, even a space that's a wide open with gravel. They'll go on that. Um, so here's the killdeer with a couple of babies. So that's that's fun. Be on the lookout for that. Even if you're in some kind of a parking lot and you hear um, the sound of the killdeer, which let's see, do I have my killdeer card here? I can pull up the sound of the killdeer. Um, be on the lookout for the babies because you might just hear, uh, if you hear the adult, you might just see the adult with the babies as well. So they are fledging right now. And let's see, I can pull up the sound of the killdeer. They get their, their name, killdeer, because it sounds like they're saying the words kill deer. So they say that over and over and over again. I pulled up my Merlin app here and I can play the kill deer song for you. So almost kind of sounds like a gall 
um, but but a little bit different. And, and they they tend to repeat that over and over and over that sound, kill deer, kill deer, kill deer. So um, you might still see them out right now and you might see them with their babies like Chris was able to catch here. Um, Red-bellied woodpecker. Uh, Stacy sent in these photos. She says, I know you've been talking about juvenile birds lately from our backyard, a male red-bellied woodpecker and a juvenile taken on 8-2. I think the juvenile is a male because at certain angles, you can see a small red spot on the top of its head. So here is the adult male um, red-bellied woodpecker. And this is a really wonderful photo because you can actually see the red belly there on the woodpecker. It's not always very visible, but in this photo, you can definitely see it. And you can tell this is a male because the red on the head of the red-bellied woodpecker goes from its bill, the base of its bill, all the way to the back of its head. So that's how you can tell that it is the male. If it was the female, uh, it, they would have kind of almost like a, a, a spot on the top of their head here where it doesn't have that red coloration. And here the bird is eating some peanuts out of a peanut pickout feeder. This is a neat feeder because it has a little funnel or sometimes they're called a baffle inside of it. And um, it'll kind of stagger the seeds on different levels. So as the birds eat the seed, it doesn't necessarily all pool down to the bottom. Um, it can keep it in two different levels. We have Niger feeders that do this as well, which are quite popular. But here is the young one. So this is the, the young uh, red-bellied woodpecker there. You can see it still has that speckling on its back so you can identify it. It's about the same size as the adult and usually once they they have fledged and left the nest and they're, they've grown into their feathers, um, they, they, they look to be about the exact same size as the adults. And in this photo here you can see that it's starting to get some red on its head including by the base of its bill. So really cool photos there of a juvenile red-bellied woodpecker sent in by Stacy. And Orioles. So some people are still getting Orioles. Um, some people are still getting them coming to their feeders. What a lot of people are reporting is that they're seeing them in their trees, but not at the feeders as often as they used to be. So it could be that they're um, kind of out foraging around for different insects. Um, people are still getting them coming to mealworm feeders here and there, but they could be grouping up ready to get uh, ready to start going down south. They're still a little bit early. They should be here for probably about three more weeks or so. Um, but here's some photos of some Orioles sent in by Bob, who says, here are a couple of the Orioles flying around the neighborhood. The day after I saw the indigo bunting, I was sitting in the same place and a few Orioles flew over and then a few more and then another, and then some flew off and a few more arrived. Just amazing to see whether it is a family or just a group of juveniles hanging out. It is pretty cool. So here are some Orioles here hanging in a tree sent in by Bob. Here's another photo of the Orioles there and another. So definitely there's still some Orioles um, in the area. So don't be surprised if you do get them coming to your feeders. Although it's not a super common sight right now, they're definitely still around. And the uh, the um, indigo bunting that Bob was referencing, here's that photo here, it says, I had an indigo bunting land no more than 10 feet away from me as I was sitting outside. It allowed me to take some better photos of this handsome fella. So Bob's been indigo bunting all season long, it seems, and they're still hanging around his house. So really, really neat photos there of the indigo bunting. Just a gorgeous male there. I love this photo with its beak open. It looks like it's yelling about something. So wonderful photos there of an indigo bunting still around town. And here's a tufted titmouse photo sent in by Bob. You might see tufted titmouse coming to your feeders. They come to peanut feeders. They'll eat sunflower seed. They'll eat the, the sunflower hearts, the insides of the sunflower. Sometimes you might even see them at your suet feeder. But with this pose, uh, Bob has uh, quoted it or labeled it saying, I am Batman, <laughs> giving a, a fun pose with its wings um, spread out there. So a really fun photo of a tufted titmouse there. And this is neat. Um, if you spend any time outdoors, you might see those group, these, uh, you know, groups of gnats or flies hanging around. And um, here are some surrounding a blue jay. And Bob says, I think this blue jay could have used some bug repellent. So a whole bunch of little bugs there hanging around the head of a blue jay there high up in a tree. And this is an adorable photo over the past a month or so. Um, we've been watching the progression of the wren 
uh, in Bob's yard bringing some food to the juveniles. And now we can actually see them making an appearance here in this photo. He says the four baby house runs before fledging and a few photos of one after fledging. All four were in a tree near the birdhouse with mom and dad stopping by to feed them. Very noisy, but also very cute. So you can see their four little heads popping out of this nesting box. So really cute photo sent in there. And here's one of the young after it's fledged and um, looks like it still hasn't totally grown into its feathers there. It's, it's especially its little tail feathers look pretty stubby. So there is the juvenile house wren. And another photo of a house wren was sent in by Mark, who has them nesting, it looks like, or caught a photo of them nesting. This looks like possibly the parent because it does have those longer tail feathers. So here's another house wren photo that was sent in locally. And there's shorebirds out and about if you spend any time by any kind of body of water that has kind of flats, wide open um, spaces of mud or sand, or even if you're by a pond, you might see some uh, shorebirds that are around. And here's some photo of some sandpipers called least sandpipers that were sent in by Mark over at Kingsbin Park. And some other birds you might see by the water. Here is a great uh, green heron. He says green heron on the hunt. Another photo sent in from Mark over at Kings Bend Park. And this is wonderful because you can see it going after something in the water, probably a fish or a frog. And look at the, the neck on that bird. So the green heron is much smaller than the great blue heron, um, but it can definitely still make an impact on the, the, uh, the, the animals in the water there. If you look at the, the length of its neck, it's pretty impressive there. It looks like it's striking after something and here it is on the bank. So beautiful pictures there of a green heron. And I was talking about goldfinches and how you might see them doing this kind of activity where they take nesting material. Here's a photo Chris had sent in of a goldfinch taking some cotton, some natural cotton out of a nesting ball. And uh, they love this really fluffy, fluffy cotton that we saw in our nesting balls. But you might also see them doing this. So this is one grabbing some of the down from the thistle plant there. Um, that's a photo that Bob had sent in. So some neat behaviors that you might see or might have seen from goldfinches. And there's different kinds of insects and butterflies out there. This is an interesting sighting, a picture of a caterpillar sent in by Ed, who says, found this large, about two and a half inch long caterpillar crawling up the side of the house the other day. Haven't ID'd it yet. I suspect it's a swallowtail of some sort, but I've never seen one this color. Usually they're that lime green color. Wondering if it might be a dark morph Eastern tiger swallowtail. Love the yellow eyes and blue dots. So it does look like it is a tiger swallowtail caterpillar. And I pulled out our life cycle of butterflies book uh, because I love this because it shows all of the different stages of the caterpillars. And like Ed was mentioning, the caterpillar tends to be kind of this lime green color like this. But as they are going to pupate, they will turn this brownish color. And so this book says a caterpillar turns dark brown when it is ready to pupate. A silk thread holds as it prepares to shed its skin one last time. So it looks like it is a tiger swallowtail caterpillar that is just about ready to pupate. And that could be why you're not seeing it on a plant. It's crawling somewhere to shed out of its skin and to pupate. So that's a really, really cool sighting. Um, the tiger swallowtail caterpillars there have those fake eyes. They have those eye spots on them that look like eyeballs here on the top of its body. But in fact, its eyes are really down here by the front of its head. So really neat sighting there. If you see another caterpillar that has larger eye spots on it, like this one here, it's probably the spice bush swallowtail. So a couple different um, caterpillars that you might see in the area. And there are butterflies out and about. And Bob sent in some photos of the different butterflies in his yard. And he says, I know one is a monarch butterfly and is flying around the milkweed, but I'm not sure about the other butterfly 
species in the photo. And in the very top left, you can see it's a little butterfly here flying around the milkweed. And that is absolutely a monarch butterfly. And then he's got these photos, beautiful photos here, where you can see some wildflowers, some black-eyed Susans, it looks like. And there's some other orange butterflies flying around in the very corners here. Those look like a type of fritillary. And so a fritillary looks like this, where it doesn't have the same markings on it as the monarch butterfly, uh, but it is orange. And they can be about the same size as the monarch. We've got a couple different species. Um, these are probably meadow fritillaries would be my guess. Um, but here's a couple others here on the plants. So we do have these other orange. There's definitely other orange butterflies in the area called fritillaries. And that's what that looks like there. So I've seen some of them flying around um, out and about too. And here's a um, beautiful photo of a monarch butterfly here flying around some milkweed. So you might see that. If you're looking for caterpillars, definitely check your milkweed right now. Um, you might find eggs still on the plants and you might also find the caterpillars. Another caterpillar you might find on your milkweed is something called a milkweed tussock moth. And the odds of you seeing just one are pretty low because they tend to, to be together all in a group. So if you see something kind of fluffy and, and kind of bizarre looking on your milkweed, it's probably one of these. They, are, they have bright orange and bright white and black tufts that come out of their body. And if they're disturbed, they tend to tumble off the plant really quickly. So that's a kind of a behavior that they have, but they're definitely on milkweed as well. They are dependent on that to survive just like the monarch butterfly is. And you can usually find butterfly or the caterpillars by the remnants they leave behind. So if you're in your garden and you see your milkweed or other plants have what are uh, some droppings on the leaves, flip up underneath the leaves and look for your caterpillars because there's probably some there. Um, here's a, another picture of a butterfly. This is a swallowtail, probably a black swallowtail sent in by Lynn who had one flying around. And I've been kind of sharing with you guys some of the different insects I've seen at nights by putting up a sheet with some different lights on it, trying to bring in some different moths, especially I was trying to get some big and different moths to come in. Uh, there's been some kind of different insects that have come to this over the past couple weeks. So I thought I'd show you some of those. Um, I talked about the Dobson fly I had seen a couple weeks ago showed up. Um, the Dobson fly was back again this weekend, they're kind of a strange looking insect. They're pretty large. They tend to be found by water because they do have an aquatic larva, which I'll show you what they look like. Um, but be on the lookout for these guys. And it landed on a little stump here and you can kind of see it. It's pretty zoomed in. You can see its little face there and its big antenna and it blended in really, really well with the stump which it, once it landed on there. But the, here's its head poking out um, of the, the stump. So it's got some pretty interesting antenna, almost like a moth antenna there. And this is what the male looks like. So this is the female. She doesn't, she'll have some jaws, but she doesn't have these massive, massive jaws. Um, so she's got just kind of that small head and the large antenna. But the male has these really big, almost like pincer type of structures coming out of its head. So if you see something like that, that is also a Dobson fly, it's just the male. And then this is what their larva looks like. So they do have an aquatic larva, so that's why you can find them by water. So that was kind of an interesting. And then this one was really pretty. This was a kind of a smaller sized moth. It was probably a little bit smaller than like a cabbage white butterfly. I've never seen one of these before and it's called a confused hapola. Who would have thought? Never heard of one of these guys before. And then playing with a macro lens could get, I could get some um, good photos here of it in a different, totally different view. You can see some of its, uh, you can see some of its characteristics more. You can really see some of its um, the, the fuzziness there of, of the insect, and that's all caused by those scales that cover their body. So pretty neat stuff to zoom in closely. You can get some really good detail on them. Um, Katie dids were out and about. Um, caddisfly, another type of insect that has aquatic larvae, so they can be found by streams. Same with the sky, marsh fly. There were still some painted 
lichen moths, which look like this. They almost look like, first I thought it was a lightning bug because their colors are so similar. And then again, with the macro lens, you can see some of its um, more characteristics there. You can see the, um, the texture of the wing. And here it is sitting on a light bulb. You can even see the stripes on its legs. So pretty, pretty fun stuff. You never know what you might find out there. There are also crane flies. So these you might see around your yard, especially too, because they do have aquatic, aquatic larvae, but then they also have some that um, their larvae are, are common in lawns and in, in sod. So if you see something that looks like a massive mosquito, so one of those kind of mosquito looking insects with the really long legs, probably not a mosquito, but it's what it's called a crane fly. So look for them out all summer long. And then here's just another photo kind of zoomed in there with the macro lens of another moth that was hanging around a really beautiful, bright white colored moth. And this was from the last time, last a uh, couple weeks ago, when just at the, the end of the evening, a toad showed up. And you can see here's a video of the toad came to the party to uh, get a nice meal here of some of the the insects that were on the sheet. So you never know what's going to show up um, doing it, which is pretty, pretty fun. So that's everything I have prepared for you guys. We'll be back on Saturday with another broadcast with even more photos. And of course, we will have wild wings here at the store at the birdhouse on Saturday with their birds of prey from 10 until noon. And in the meantime, we're definitely getting ready for our photo contest. So if you've got some photos you're interested in submitting, now's a good time to get them printed and uh, and ready to turn in because that starts on Monday. So exciting stuff happening. Um, so if you've got any questions or comments, you can put those in the little comments section here. Randy says, good morning, everybody. And Liz, he says, not long ago, I heard a falcon overhead, watched it land on an, ant an antenna above an apartment building on South Avenue. It landed when I heard a second falcon not too far away. Really, really cool. Yeah, there are definitely peregrine falcons around, especially in the city. So I'm not surprised that you saw some around South Ave there. Um, they do nest on the Times Square building. And so it could be either some of those adults or some of those young that are out and about, and they do have kind of a screech. So you might, you might um, see and hear them around the area for a while. So neat sighting there. Um, Mark says, good morning. I have lots of downy woodpeckers and they love the finch feeder. Yeah. So I've been getting downy woodpeckers coming to my finch feeder too, which is funny. Um, especially the juvenile downy woodpeckers will sometimes eat Niger seed, but they definitely will eat the finch favorite seed. If you've been feeding that, it's a mix of the Niger seed and the ground up sunflower hearts. So they definitely love that because they will eat the sunflower hearts, but Downy woodpeckers, especially those juveniles, are known to eat the Niger seeds. So don't be surprised if you see some at your at your feeders. I had one the other day. Um, Dina says, thanks to everyone for all the fabulous photos. I had a swallowtail on my zinnias last night, along with a ton of bats. Oh, that's so cool. So I'm curious, Dina, if you're still on, if your bats are in a bat house or if they are just kind of in your your area roosting in some kind of a natural cavity. That's really, really cool. Um, I've been working on putting up a bat house myself, so I'm excited um, to hear what other people's experiences are. Um, Ed, who had the caterpillar, uh, the really cool caterpillar says, thanks for the swallowtail. ID on my caterpillar photo. Interesting to know that the dark color suggested it was going to pupate. Also, we're seeing some of those Dobson flies collecting on the screens at night. They look like a throwback to the age of dinosaurs. Yeah, actually, they are a really um, ancient kind of um, insect, so they're, they're not... Um, they're not one of the more evolved insects. They are quite an ancient type of insect. So it's it's um, interesting you say that because yes, they they are known for being around for quite some time. So it sounds like Ed is also getting the Dobson flies, which um, look like this kind of thing. And yeah, they'll come to lights at night, especially if you're around any kind of water. So keep an eye out for them. You never know what you're what you'll see. So they're pretty interesting looking. Um, Dina says about her bats, no bat house, just ro roosting locally. So Dina's got some bats around, which is wonderful. They will eat thousands of 
insects in an evening. So if you've got mosquitoes around, bats are the absolutely best insect uh, control that you can have out there. So it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions. We'll be back on Saturday with another broadcast. And until then, enjoy your birds. And we hope we will see your submissions in our photo contest starting on Monday. And hopefully we'll see you here at uh, the store for wildlings on Saturday. But we'll be back with another broadcast at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And until then, have a great week. Bye-bye.